Hello and welcome back. So you can see the front of the truck's already torn apart. I didn't show any of this in a video because you've already seen plenty of people take fenders off, radiator off, the front bumper, all the pieces and parts just to kind of get going and everything. So the engine's pretty close to being pulled out. So we're gonna be pulling the engine out today in this video. But I wanted to take all the measurements that we're gonna need for the engine swap to put the the Chevy 153 or the Merc Cruiser 120 in here. Since the engine's done and rebuilt and it's running really good, so I figure it's time to pull the engine out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around the truck and I probably took way more measurements than needed, I don't know, but I don't know what measurements I'm gonna need. So I'm gonna show you the way I'm measuring it and then hopefully you'll have to measure yours whatever way you measure yours if you do the conversion. So, Let's take a look at it and we'll see what's going on. So the first thing I did is you could see I have a plumb bob I have from here going up to the ceiling and I have it hanging down. So this actually is lined right up with the dead center of the crank coming down. So I have the center line of the engine with just a plumb bob from the, the ceiling hanging straight down. So that should get us our center point of the crank. So when we put the other engine in, well, our center line will be right here. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of reference points the whole way around so we can kind of put everything in the right way. So first one would be the front, um, front of the uh, crank, because really, if you think about it, the crank of this engine is going to be the same position as the crank of the of the Chevy engine or any swap that you do really it should actually all be in a line together so we're good with there so we got that the next thing that I have is I don't know if you ever seen one of these but it's called a protractor a magnetic based protractor I've had this for many years for adjusting things you can see it tells you your angle from these two edges right here so First thing I'm gonna do is I put it onto the water pump. Well, thermostat housing, because really the head has no flat spot. So I wanted to get at the flat spot of the head and that's the flattest I could get. So I figure if that's flat, this is flat, and then this is flat, this should get us pretty close. So right now we're at zero degrees right now. I had the truck is sitting actually pretty level and surprising it is. I do have jack stands underneath it just so the end this whole the whole truck doesn't move while I'm working on it but I really only jacked it up maybe like a a little smidge on here maybe half an inch or so but the engine right now is sitting horizontal this way so we'll say we're horizontal zero degrees right here so if we come over here to the manifold over here I, said, I think I said it like this whenever I did it. So this one way, we're sitting just about one degree, maybe even a half a degree past zero. This going, can't hold it good, going this way here is about, about a half a degree is where we're sitting. So then I went down here too. You can see there's a flat spot here and kind of a flat spot here too. So you can kind of, Stick this in between. Let me see if I can get that. And that got us, again, we're just about one degree tilted a little bit here. So the engine's tilted a little bit. Like, we'll say, if I, this is extreme, but if we're sitting like this, so it's tilted maybe like a one degree this way. Okay, so we're tilting this way. So, we got the engine here, we got those degrees. So now we're gonna go down underneath and we're gonna measure the underneath where the transmission is. So now we're sitting down here underneath the truck. Here's the transmission bell housing right here. Drive shaft, transfer case right here, whatever. It's kind of dark down here, but I tried to get some light down here. So actually in the old instructions of the original Scotty was there's actually a scanned copy on the internet that I found and it actually told me to put, says to put a piece of block of wood right here to keep the transmission from moving. So what I did is I took a pair of calipers, I measured the height right here, and I got um, a measurement of about 1.835 inches, which is probably a real wacky number 
for right here in this space or whatever, but this block of wood measures just probably just a smidge below that or almost exact. So I stacked up some wood and just kind of hammered them together. So now this piece of wood fits right underneath the transmission like that. So that'll give us a spacer for underneath to get the transmission at the right height. And this should be good enough to get us in a position height wise with the uh, with everything so that gets our transmission going up and down so then if we move back here to the back oh i gotta get my protractor i'll be right back so if we move we got the protractor now so if we move back here to the let's position the light if we move back here and then our handbrake here we're at well, I can tell too, we're still, let's see here, if you can even see that, you probably can't really see it very good, but when it hangs, it's just about, again, almost like a half a degree towards this way again. It's toward that way, it's tilted. So it's just tilted a little bit so we can get our, our engine in a proper position on uh, using the handbrake. So it got us our angle this way too to confirm the front that we're at about a half a degree from the engine here. It's tilted a little bit. So let's go to our next measurement. So now we're inside the truck. I took all the floor pans out and uh, cover the transmission cover tunnel. So the next measurements we're gonna take are inside the engine, inside the here. So again, I took the protractor. It's probably remeasuring a lot of these things, but you probably don't have to, but I did anyways just so I can have more, more than just one place. So again, to confirm those other numbers, we're just about at half a degree again. Even here, we're at like another half a degree. So it seems to be all of our numbers are coming in pretty close to being about a half a degree off than zero. So then I took it this way, and I turned it this way on that plate. And we're right at, zero degrees here too so our transmission is sitting horizontal too just the same as the engine is on the front off the thermostat housing so this confirms that so that's good so the next thing is we're going to get a ruler to measure down here so the next thing i did was i took a ruler and i put it up against the front side of the transmission here and then the flat part of the transmission right here so I took this and I put that dead flat against there, okay? So I measured, so this keeps our ruler in place and it doesn't move. And then I measured to the edge here is like six and seven eighths to this position here, right on to, right onto the edge of here. So I put a mark with a Sharpie here, so I marked everything right, so I didn't, so I put that in the exact same spot where it was before and it's dead flat. And I wrote down all these numbers so I wouldn't forget them. And I think, I think it was six and seven eighths. It was right almost dead on to that mark right there. But again, these measurements, you're gonna have to take on your own. These are not for every truck. This just happens to be for mine. So this is just how I'm doing mine. So I got the left-hand side. Well, that uh, would be the, yeah, left-hand side on this side. So let's go over to the right-hand side and make a measurement next. Now we're over on the right-hand side. I couldn't find anything It was nice, like the transmission tunnel on the other side, the side of the transmission that was flat, or I couldn't get any place that would work so I could put my ruler in exact spot. So what I did was, is I took this over here to the 10 mark, and on this uh, seat box bracket right here, so I took this to 10 right here, and I put this dead against there, so it's totally tight onto, so I could push it against here tight and measure it to 10 right here. And you can see it's like 10 is right there onto the frame and it's dead flat against right here. And then I went over here and at the two, I marked it at the two inch mark right here. So then if I line up here with here, straight across, it should come right to the two inch mark on the ruler. So I kind of have it here and here, it should get us right lined up so the transmission's right this way, going this way. 
So I, again, I couldn't get into here either to do a good measurement because I want it to be someplace that's like a good reference point so things don't move. So when I take out the engine, put another one in, I can move it around and position it and get everything lined up exactly the same. So, so this is what I did on the right-hand side. So those are the measurements that I took of all the, the truck and everything so I can try to get the engine in the correct position that it was before. For the new engine so this is the kind of my marks that i wrote down like the thermostat housing it was at zero degrees horizontal and uh the motor here the engine the intake was about half a degree to uh, maybe one degree to zero in between there and horizontally and then the bell housing it was 1.3835 basically eight one and seven eighths would get you pretty close to those numbers which this number probably isn't even right anyways, but it's close to being dead on with our block of wood that we put in. So again, hand is about the handbrake drum is a vertical about zero degree or maybe about one degree, pretty much the same to that. The tilt was on there. Actually, I'll mark that on there right now. Approximately one degree, same thing here. I'll do approximately one degree on that too. That's kind of hard to write and talk on the phone. <laughs> Look, hold the phone. So anyways, we got our six and seven eighths from the frame and on, for the left-hand side and uh, in the bell housing, the transmission bell housing here, here and the right-hand side, we got our frame at 10, at the 10 inch mark on the frame flat against the bracket and then at the two inch mark over here onto the transfer case. So there's, I wrote down all the measurements so I don't forget them in the future. So the next thing, we're gonna hook up the hoist and start getting the engine out. All right, so I think I got everything disconnected. I got all the flywheel, not the flywheel, the bell housing bolts off. I put a floor jack underneath the transmission just so it doesn't slam down whenever I pull the engine out. So I got it hooked up to the hoist here and let's see if we can get it out. Well, that thing does not want to get off the bell housing. So I'm going to give it a few whacks and I'll be back. Okay, so when you go to pull an engine, make sure you put take all the nuts off the fly off the the bell housing cuz I forgot one and it was still attached to it. Let's see if she'll move out this time. Now 
There we go. We got her. It also helps when you take the bell housing at bolts off that you actually put turn a light on. It also helps so you can see. add-on oil filter over here it's at actually in the way so it's a little bit of a pain in the butt so I gotta lift it up over so then that clears the mouth there Okay, so we got the, the diesel engine, the two and a quarter out of the Land Rover series. And with all the measurements, I probably over measured everything. You probably don't even need that many measurements, but I don't know what I need for when we put the engine in. So we got the engine out. So the next video, we're gonna be putting the Merc Cruiser 120 engine in with the Scotty adapter. This is gonna, that'll be the test fit to see how it fits in there and you know, come up with some uh, mount ideas or something like that. So anyways, thank you for liking, subscribing, and following along. Thank you very much. Be awesome because you are awesome. Bye-bye.